Now, you may have heard that the auto industry has had a bit of a challenging year in 2019 and you wouldn't be wrong. But right now, right here where I'm standing, it sure doesn't look like it. That's right, we're back to celebrate all the great new cars launched in the year gone by. Welcome everybody to the 2020 Auto Car Awards presented by Reliance General Insurance, partnered with the Times Network, powered by Pure For Show by Bharat Petroleum, with tire partner Apollo Tires and technology partner Orbitsys. That's a big lineup of cars. But amazingly, this is the short list. You see, while there were many more launches in 2019, for a car to qualify for the top honor of Car of the Year, it not only has to have been launched in the year gone by, it also has to have been homologated for India. And if an old model has been facelifted or updated, it only makes the cut if it has been given significant powertrain, interior and sheet metal changes. And of course, these cars will not be directly compared to one another, but instead judged on their individual fitness for purpose. Now, not just anyone on the Autocar India team can pick the car of the year. It's up to our jury of experts who have stayed consistent since the start. So, let's meet them. Manvendra Singh Barwani, India's foremost automotive historian. Naren Kartikeyan, the fastest Indian. Gaurav Gill, India's number one rally driver. Renuka Kirpalani, editor of the Autocar Show. Shapur Kotwal, Editor-in-Chief, What Car India. Orma Sorabji, Editor, Autocar India. With so many cars to get through, the jurors wasted no time in hopping right in and checking the contenders out. Starting with the hatchbacks. Refresh Quid actually looks a lot nicer. The interiors also have a few more features that give it uh, that little bit extra. But I think when you compare it to others in its class, um, you know, the interior quality doesn't quite match up there. As we all know that uh, Renault has been uh, in India for quite some time now. A little bit of it has been struggling, but I think this is one of the cars that has made its mark in India for Renault. Yeah, I think uh, clearly this is a car that's been designed inside out. So uh, the space inside has been given priority, but as a result, the proportions have definitely gone for a toss. Styling is not the strength of this car. What is, is that lovely, smooth, one-litre, three-cylinder petrol. It's easily amongst the best in its class and there's plenty of space in the back. You know, people looking for an entry-level car, this makes a lot of sense. It's sensible, it's spacious, it's efficient. And now, you know, it's right up there with all the safety and uh, BS6 norms, you can get one with a BS6 engine as well. So a very practical and sensible buy. Very well rounded, gives you a lot. Again, very high on features, high on space. Uh, not very thrilling to drive and the 1.2 is particularly weak. But uh, otherwise, as an everyday car, as a family runabout, a small hatchback, it's, uh, it's very well conceived. I think, um, yeah, ride quality has improved, uh, the way it handles has improved. And of course, the engine's also really nice, so uh, it is taking the game forward. So in the spirit of Bonhomie and joint venture, this is the Maruti Baleno, the Toyota version of it, of course the Glanza, but this one is interesting. It's got the dual jet engine and the hybrid system with the lithium ion battery under the seat. So greater efficiency, a bit more performance from that dual jet engine. And yeah, for now this, this car is a bit cheaper as well. While hatchbacks rule the roost in India, the family hauler that is the MPV was also represented this year. Yeah, I think, um you know, what's taken me uh, completely by surprise is the packaging. It's really miraculous how much space they managed to get in here with uh, three rows of seats and under sub four meters. XL6, the fact that it's based on our car of the year, which is the Ertiga, now that's a great starting point. What Maruti has done is obviously they've jazzed it up, they've made it a little bit more upmarket, uh, they've given it the captain seats, uh, it's still a three-row configuration, 
but it only comes with a petrol engine there's no diesel so in terms of practicality there's a bit of a compromise over there as we all know SUVs are dominating at just about every price point starting from sub 4 meter compact ones and going on to rather larger stuff so what did the jurors think this is a dc to petrol version and uh, it's quite quite nice to drive quite uh, peppy and quite compact and uh, exactly what it was made for so you know i I I really like the car. The venue is uh, quite impressive and I think really a car that the millennials of today would really like with all its connected features. Um little tight on back seat space, but apart from that, um I think um, everything else about this car is really well packaged and uh, yeah, it's a strong contender. Interior is also very impressive. Good plastics, good quality for the class. But I think what really stands out are the pair of engines the XUV 300 comes with. It's a strong petrol, a 1.2 turbo, and a very strong 1.5 diesel. It's a really a uh, spacious car. It's comfortable. Overall, it's quite impressive. I think if there's one thing uh, that one could pinpoint about it, it is the fact that it is a bit on the pricey side. Nissan as as you know has always had a little bit of bad luck in India. I have had uh, two Nissans and I've been very happy with them and I think this car the Kicks is definitely a major leap as far as the styling is concerned. I'm sure young people looking for an entry level car with enough luxury will opt for a car like this. it's got a great uh, engine this particular model is petrol and it's got the right amount of torque and um, the response well uh, you can understand when you drive this car why the customers uh, you know flocking for it there's a lot of interest in the market this they they selling you know 14000 odd vehicles a, a month so what the indian public really would like to see it's all you know packaged in this car hard to fault this car for the money it is uh, just represents outstanding value it's fully kitted out wide range of options wide range of powertrains i mean kia has carpet bombed this segment uh, given a real quality product for the price uh, it drives well it's spacious whether you talk about performance whether you talk about quality whether you talk about the features that come for it whether it's the comfort the ride quality i just couldn't fault it and you know it was one of those cars that really stands out from the crowd it's probably in its class the most robust nice suspension for bad roads and it has that solid feel that permeates the whole car uh in other areas it's not as refined maybe slightly rough around the edges in some places uh it has given a tata car an image thanks to jlr of a higher uh, category than what it actually is of course the uh, underpinnings of the l550 it's a land rover platform the discovery platform so you can see a lot of uh, resemblance from the uh, discovery sport In fact it drives a lot better than the Discovery Sport and for so it adapted for Indian conditions and so on. It doesn't have that perhaps ultimate finesse and dynamically also a little bit weak. But I think for the everyday buyer uh, you know this car the comfort especially the back seat which is super comfortable probably seals the deal and that's why it's uh, hugely popular. I am pleasantly surprised about the fit and feel of the car and the finish of the car is pretty good. looking to the price uh, range that it is uh, competing it uh, but uh, some of the other being a historically uh, you know inclined guy and doing history of cars in india the name mg suddenly doesn't you know you have to think of something else maybe hector is good enough but mg is something else well, the age of the electric car is in exactly her but we do have the kona a proper 100% electric with a good range and it's even fun to drive oh, with the kona i think uh, honda has pulled out a ace from its sleeves it's really a fantastic car brings you to the future and the suv brigade continued into the luxury segments coupe suvs are something that you either love or you don't like but i must say the back of this car does look attractive and what's even more attractive to me is that 30d badge now that six cylinder diesel in this car makes it do a 0 to 100 in just 5.6 seconds and for a big bulky suv like that that's extremely quick 
So this is the all new BMW X5. It's grown bigger and more luxurious. Uh, the cabin really well appointed. A uh, lot many more features. The engine, the three liter diesel, as cracking as ever. Fantastic performance. But this car has been softened a bit. It's not got that taut hard edge as before. It's been kind of designed more for comfort. And in that sense, it's more of a luxury vehicle than a sporty SUV. It's very American, for sure, you know, and uh, of course the off-road capabilities are quite, uh, you know, quite a thing um, when you read about it. But uh, it's quite rough on the roads and so on, but uh, what the hell, I mean, it looks stunning, so that's what it matters. Now, SUVs may be the new thing, but the sedan is still alive and well too, and it was pretty well represented this year. The design is a little bit more sharper, cleaner. It's good to drive as well. Uh, the engine was one of the strong points, but I have to say with BS6 tune, the responsiveness, that's been a dulled a bit and there's no diesel option that might come at a later stage. I think the Civics always look really good. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's always been, it always has been very well accepted in terms of how it looks. Really quick uh, ratio steering, very impressive steering, um, response and the steering reactions. Sitting in the car without it moving, the Civic gives you a very, very sporty feeling. It just wraps itself around the driver and that's what I really like about it. This hunkered down stance gives it a lot of character. The only thing is the 1.8 litre engine feels a little under par, just doesn't feel up to the job. So the new Camry hybrid and this time around, of course, much more efficiency. That's the big story. But of course, all the luxury features, they're still there. All the comfort, all the cool seats, the reclining seats, that lovely center armrest. So it does work as a luxury car and very well as an efficient means of transport. Of course, it's also greener and it's electrified. So it does a lot of things well. The new three, I think, actually strikes a really good balance between being a driver's car and more comfortable for the passenger as well now. Uh, it's a little bit more spacious, uh, ride quality has gotten better and it still has that fun to drive uh, feel from behind the wheel. I think this is a big step up from the previous one, especially because it's got luxury and performance, I think, together. They've managed to, you know, have give the customers a lot of space in the cabin compared to the rival cars. I think it's a lot more roomier, a lot more comfort. The all new A6 has been a long time coming, but it's a huge leap forward. The design much sharper than before. It's a much tauter looking car, a more in your face car, not as subtle and subdued as previous Audis and the interiors also completely different. It is a very impressive interior, definitely feels super premium, super luxury and that's the feeling that you get even when you drive this car or you're sitting in it. It's refined, it's comfortable, it's quiet. It just is a super luxury car. The car, you know, is a real competition for the S-Class for sure now because uh, they, you know, it's uh, it's come a long way in terms of the ride and so on, um, and you know there are a lot of features as well. I'm not sure about the front, the looks of the car, but uh, but to drive it, you know, it feels quite uh, driver's car. So BMW has kept that DNA intact. And finally, a little bit of eye candy as two purpose-built performance cars also made the cut this year. In spite of uh, this being a convertible, it's really, really stiff. It's it's really quick. The engine's really nice. It's got lots of uh, torque. The gearbox pretty, you know, uh, slick. It's very quick. I love the steering. It's it's they've got it pretty much right. And um, especially the fact that you know, being a convertible and the cars, the chassis is still so stiff and it it points out to where you want it to be all the time. It's it's I think it's a great uh, small pocket rocket. This new car feels so luxurious and beautifully built from the inside. When you drive it around initially, you think, where is the sportiness gone? It's so luxurious, comfortable, easy to drive, and it feels a bit heavy as well. So you sort of doubt its capabilities, but then when you take it on the right road or on the right track as we did, and you really push it hard, wow, that sports car performance really does come out stronger than ever. But this one is very expensive, 
even by global standards. And with that, we come to the end of our four-wheeler jury round. Be sure to also check out our two-wheeler jury round video as well. Thank you.